Mr. President, Honourable Member of European Parliament, Honourable Dean, ladies and gentlemen, it's really a great honour to have a chance to address to the General Assembly of CIC. I'm a hunter myself too. I studied actively hunting when I was 12 years old. Before that, I was walking behind my father since I was five years old in the Finnish forests. We also belonged to the hunting club in countryside of Finland, where every member had an obligation to participate to conservation uh, activities. Basically, in concrete terms, it meant that uh, in winter time, when there is meter high snow on the ground, we were bringing uh, cereals to black grouses, we were cutting trees for hares, and we were conserving uh, the landscape to be more uh, uh, sustainable for white game. As part of this hobby, we were allowed to hunt small game and big game, and we always had in our hunting club, as, uh, as well as, more generally speaking, in the culture where, I, where we have lived, three main uh, principles. The first one is responsibility which means, for instance, respect of wildlife and the game, sustainability, and finally, transparency. Transparency is more and more a theme which we have to use in order to, to strengthen the understanding of sustainable conservation and hunting. It's supposed to be in our side. It's not against any, anybody. And the more we can explain what we are doing, why we are doing, and how we are doing things to more sustainable, to support for sustainable hunting is. In addition to my own experiences, I would like to take this opportunity to say a few words about policy environment around hunting in Europe. The long-term viability of hunting depends upon healthy population of birds and other animals. When carried out in a sustainable and responsible manner, hunting is a positive force for conservation. As hunters and legislators, we should work together and, and ensure the compa compatibility of hunting practices with our common conservation goals and with our policy and legislation. Much of the hunting in the EU is regulated by two pieces of legislation at, uh, at the EU level, the Habitats Directive and the Birds Directive. These laws are central to, uh, to achieving the target of holding and res uh, reversing losses of biodiversity and associated changes in ecosystem services in the EU. The Birds Directive establishes a general system of protection for all wild birds in the EU. It w fully recognizes the role of hunting, but requires that this is carried out in a sustainable way, consistent with the conservation and concerned population. The Habitat Directive does not include specific provisions on hunting, but is still relevant as it sets different levels of protection for different lists of species, other than the birds. Member States may exceptionally authorize derogations to kill or capture specimens of species protected under both birds and habitat directives in certain situations and if all the relevant conditions set by the two directives are fulfilled. The Commission has provided guidance on the interpretation of these provisions. In consultation with member states, experts and stakeholders, this includes the Guide on Sustainable Hunting under the Birds Directive. One of the key objectives of the Nature Directives in, is the establishment and, and effective, establishment and effective management of an EU-wide network of areas of high biodiversity value called Natura 2000. Well-regulated hunting in line with conservation objectives of these sites and active involvement of hunters in their practical management can deliver mutual benefits 
both in terms of hunting and in terms of successful biodiversity conservation. The Commission is uh, convinced that the sustainable management and use of wildlife can represent a strong incentive to support the maintenance of habitats and species in, uh, in these Natura 2000 sites. As an active hunter, I know that hunting creates passion. This goes for people who are in favor or against hunting. To address mistrust and conflict between hunters and environmental NGOs in, in the past, the European Commission launched the Sustainable Hunting Initiative in 2001. The aim was to promote dialogue and cooperation between environmental and hunters' organizations in order to achieve and enhance sustainable hunting uh, under the BIRDS Directive. This successful initiative led to important outcomes, such as the publication of European Commission Guide to Sustainable Hunting under the BIRDS Directive and the adoption of an EU agreement on sustainable hunting. There is also a welcome increase in the number of good examples of hunters' involvement in habitat management. Uh, one example comes from my home country, Finland, where the EU co-funded LIFE project, Return of uh, Rural Wetlands, by uh, the Finnish Wildlife Agency, has restored and created wetlands for water birds. However, there are still important challenges, such as uh, how to regulate hunting of species that are declining or and uh, how to improve our knowledge base. The Commission, European Commission is also aware that the successful recovery of number of threatened wildlife species has in some cases generated conflicts with certain human activities, especially at local level. One of these issues in, uh, is the return of uh, large carnivores, such as wolf, bear or lynx, into areas where they have been absent for decades or even hundreds of years. The Commission is always ready to work with member states and stakeholders to tackle such conflicts. For example, over the past two decades, the EU Life Programme has helped finance more than 70 projects related to large carnivores often showcasing practices that can help people to coexist with large carnivores. In June 2014, an EU platform on coexistence between people and large carnivores was officially launched with the signature of an agreement between a number of stakeholder organizations, including your organization, the International Council for Game Wildlife Conservation. I would like to thank uh, your organization for its active participation and constructive role within this platform. I wish to also recognize the contribution of your organization to the efforts of the Collaborative Partnership on Sustainable Wildlife Management. This initiative has already delivered a number of authoritative documents to guide work on the sustainable use and conservation of wildlife resources. The International Council for Game and Wildlife Cons Conservation has also the honor of having Mr. Jan Heyn, President of the Policy and Law Division of your organization, as Vice Chair of this partnership. The sustainable use of wildlife will also be the subject of the discussion at the 13th Conference of the Parties to the Convention of Biological uh, Biodiversity which will be held in Cancun, Mexico, in December this year. I am sure that the expertise and dedication of the members of your organization will continue to provide excellent input to this discussion.